Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Ramos Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Ramos Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 31 in the Dewey Ramos Bible, but Psalm 32 in the RSV. To David himself, understanding. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. This verse uses the phrase, sins are covered, which means that God has dealt with your sins and they don't need to be dwelled on anymore. This is related to the forgiveness mentioned earlier in the verse. In any case, it's much better to be forgiven of our sins. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord hath not imputed sin, and in whose spirit there is no guile. If God says you're not guilty of sin, then you must not be guilty of sin, since God is always right. However, although everyone has committed a sin of some kind, a person who has no intention of cunningly deceiving anyone else for their own reasons is blessed, according to this verse. After all, deception leads to sinfulness. Because I was silent, my bones grew old, whilst I cried out all the day long. Silent in this case means silent about my sins. David felt awful when he'd done something terrible and hadn't admitted it. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. I am turned in my anguish, whilst the thorn is fastened. The thorn implies an instrument of discomfort. When David sinned, he felt the pressure of that sin, as if from the hand of God imploring him to admit his wrongdoing and seek forgiveness. I have acknowledged my sin to thee, and my injustice I have not concealed. I said I will confess against myself my injustice to the Lord, and thou hast forgiven the wickedness of my sin. As a Catholic, it's important for me to remember that I have the sacraments to help me reconcile with God, but just as important as this, to acknowledge that the sins I committed were actually wrong and need to be forgiven. This is something David points out in this verse, and it's a good point no matter what. If we don't acknowledge that we did wrong by sinning, we'll only be deceiving ourselves and harming our relationship with God. We need to learn the difference between right and wrong, informing our consciences, and pray to God about our sins, reflecting on the moral character of our past actions, if we want to really know what sorts of things to confess. For this shall every one that is holy pray to thee in a seasonable time, and yet in a flood of many waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Even the holiest people can pray for forgiveness by the thousands, and never be anywhere near as holy as God himself is. There are some standards we can just never reach. Thou art my refuge from the trouble which hath encompassed me, my joy. Deliver me from them that surround me. We recognize that God alone can truly protect us, and we ask him to save us from our enemies. I will give thee understanding, and I will instruct thee in this way, in which thou shalt go. I will fix my eyes upon thee. Here, David is obviously not talking to God anymore. He's talking to a younger person, perhaps a child or student, who he plans to teach to remain faithful to God. Do not become like the horse and the mule who have no understanding, with bit and bridle bind fast their jaws, who come not near unto thee. You need to understand the difference between right and wrong. If other people around you don't understand that difference, don't listen to them at all. Many are the scourges of the sinner, but mercy shall encompass him that hopeth in the Lord. If we abandon God and dive into sin, we're in for a terrible time. However, if we remain faithful to God and trust him to reward that faithfulness, he'll show mercy on us. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye just, and glory, all ye right of heart. As long as we continue struggling to do the right thing and obey God, we have good reason to celebrate and be thankful to him. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.